Welcome to Fourth and One. I am Todd Palmer, joined by Nick Jacobs, and we are here to talk about your AFC West champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Nick, we can finally say it. Um, how good does it feel to say that the Chiefs are now uh, three-time uh, consecutive AFC West champions? Wait a minute. That's what you're talking about in this room? What? Oh, I'm I'm in the wrong room. Excuse yeah, yeah, yeah. My, uh, <laughs> no, did you think this was a Raiders podcast? Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought it was. Because <laughs> we could talk about draft picks if you'd rather. I mean, yeah, talk about that. And but I, I think people are excited. I think people want to talk about being the number one seed since 1997. Where were you in 1997, Nicholas? Watching the Broncos game and crying. Not yeah. as much as Lynn Elliott and the Colts. But, but were you were you still in elementary school? Um, were, were... Yeah, I was for the Colts. Um, I was at Fox Hill Elementary, North Kansas City School District. There you go. Um, then I, I not. And then you stopped wetting the bed and moved on to middle school. <laughs> by the time they lost the Broncos in '97, it, 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 it's pretty close to that time um, yeah. when I was at Newmark Middle School. I, uh, uh, I was in college already. I'm, I'm an old man. Congrats on but that. But there are a lot of people out there who, as I'm saying this, are, are like they're like I was 40 already. Well, that's not true. I can, do you think those people can can figure out how to download a podcast? Yes, they can. <laughs> <Yes>. Ask your grandchildren. <laughs> no, but, and Christmas is already over, so that's I mean, right. that's you're gonna have to text them or something. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I, I speaking of which, I, I taught my mom to text uh, several years ago. Congrats. Regretted the decision ever since. <laughs> <laughs> that's your own fault for giving her tools to succeed. Tom. But hey, hey, you know, I mean, look, I, uh, but everybody can. Hey, but still, third time was the charm here. Okay, Chiefs basically had everything laid out in front of him most of the month of December. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know they got Eric Berry back, and and things were looking good after they kind of looked like they kind of figured out how to adjust uh, to the Kareem Hunt situation, and then they they. Lose to the Chargers, and then they go on the road and they lose at Seattle. And all of a sudden, you're thinking, um, "Man, is this really going to happen?" Fortunately, they had a, a four and now four and twelve Raiders team um, sitting there at the end of the season, and everybody else cooperated. Whether it was the Patriots losing a couple, uh, or the Chargers losing to the Ravens, uh, you know, the Steelers losing to to the Raiders, things like that. Uh, down the street, everybody cooperated. It kind of broke just right uh, for the Chiefs, and here they are, number one seed. It's only the third time uh, in their history. Um, and look, they did it in spectacular fashion today. Uh, cause here's the other thing that maybe goes a little bit overlooked about, um, having to play. I, Cause I think a lot of people were hoping, Hey, if they had won that chargers game, maybe they get a couple weeks where they can rest guys up, make sure nobody gets hurt. Um, uh, but because they had to play through week 17, we got to see some pretty cool things today. Uh, Patrick Mahomes got to 50 touchdowns and 5,000 passing yards, which he probably wouldn't have done if he didn't play today, obviously, right? Um, how, how significant is that in your mind, knowing that the only other quarterback in history who's ever done both those things the same season uh, was a guy named Peyton Manning? I've heard of him. Um, yeah. I, hear, I hear he's okay. You think he's – is Peyton Manning a, a – a, a Hall of Famer in your opinion? Yes. <laughs> he's also a future general manager or owner. Yeah, at some point, yeah. whenever Eli finally retires, so that'll be good. Yeah, I'm just saying. I think he'd be a great VP of football operations somewhere, and he if he doesn't want to be an owner. So I'm excited for the sheriff to have a new role in the NFL and be able to see him on a regular basis. There you go. But <clears throat> yeah, Mahomes. Um, yeah, for for a guy to do that in his second year in the league is flat out. First year as a starter, it's insane. It's insane. Like I mean. I know people want to continue to credit Andy Reid and say that Andy Reid's the whole thing behind it. And, but, I mean, Mahomes still has to go out there and make the plays. And, and there's some of those plays they didn't – like Andy's even joked over the entire year. There's some of those plays that you don't exactly draw up. Because no. You either have it or you don't, and he's got it. No, the, so. the Ravens play is a perfect example. I mean, yeah. the, the play got – the play design got blown to smithereens by, yeah. by the, the rush of – I mean, there's an, Andy Reid had nothing to do with with the the way Patrick Mahomes won that game. Correct, I would agree. But but tell me more about how uh, you know he didn't have any game winning drives or you know they didn't. Oh feed yeah, no, we can get into that when we talk MVP later. Man. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, we know but, how angry the the tweeter is. Yeah, but look, there was uh, there was uh, that wasn't the only record today. Uh, first yeah. of all, Andy Reid moved past a uh, broke a tie with a. Uh, one Marty Schottenheimer yeah, and on like, the all-time uh, NFL wins list. And like BJ Kissel said, it was fitting that it was against the Raiders, given how much Marty hated them. <laughs> no, that is true. That is true. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, Marty, I'm sure, 
I wish, I wish you really could have been around to appreciate that one. Um, might have, might have watched it. So uh, w- that would have been nice to get his thoughts on that. Um, I'm not sure anybody hated the Raiders quite. <laughs> much not as Marty, much Marty man. did, man. No. Um, all right. Well, the, you know, this Chiefs offense, um, as you'd expect from a team that had the third most points in NFL history, um, shattered the franchise record. Um, uh, you know, I mean, Mahomes not only uh, – you know, the, the 50 touchdowns, 5,000 yards, uh, only the third. There, there's one other quarterback besides Mahomes and Manning who've ever thrown 50 touchdowns in any season. Uh, some guy named Tom Brady. Uh, I hear he's pretty good, too. Um, Mahomes had the eighth most passing yards in NFL history. Um, the only guys who've ever thrown for more are uh, some guy named Brady, uh, some guy named Manning. Uh, Drew Brees and Ben Roethlisberger are the only players who've ever thrown for more passing yards in a season than Mahomes did. Um Broke Trent Green's record for completions in a season. Um, Travis Kelsey briefly held the NFL record for most receiving yards in a season by a tight end. And then uh, George Kittle with San Francisco passed him in the afternoon games. Yeah, Kelsey was joking about that in the locker room. He's like, you know, I'm pretty, it's, well, it's been an hour. I'm pretty sure I already lost it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he did uh, break Tony Gonzalez's record for most pass receptions this season with 103, mm-hmm. which broke Gonzalez's record of 102 in 2004. Um, Gonzalez, interesting note, did not pass him um, later in that game by catching 104 yards or 104 passes in the fourth quarter from Chad Henney. So he does get to keep that record. Are you happy for Travis? Yes, that's great. <laughs> All right. And then Tyreek Hill on that 67-yard touchdown uh, broke the Chiefs' single-season record for receiving yards. Uh, Derek Alexander had 1,391 in 2000. Tyreek Hill finishes this year with 1,479. Um, not not a bad haul for the Chiefs. This is the this is the, the record that I thought was most interesting, though. It better be the one I thought was. Let me see if he did it. Uh, the one that I thought th- th- that really stood out to me when I saw it uh, in, in the Chiefs game notes was Tyreek Hill now has 16 touchdowns of 50 plus yards before turning 25. And I think what caught, what struck me was he's tied for the most all time in NFL history with Gail Sayers mm-hmm. at number three on the list is Randy Moss. And I, when I saw that, I just thought, cause we, we had a stat earlier in the year when it came to the different types of touchdowns, the, the, the punt return, the, the kickoff return, rushing, receiving and all that where he was in the same category as Gail Sayers. And I'm mm-hmm. like, man, when you're mentioned with the Kansas Comet, um, that's some really elite company. That, that's the one that jumped out, jumped off the page at me. That was not the one that I, I was, I was hoping for. All right. Well, well then, then hit me with it. Um, the was Chiefs, it Reggie Ragland, uh, no, it's not getting run down. Uh, no, no. Okay. It's not, it's not individual related. Okay. Uh, from what I saw online, uh, the chiefs are the first team in NFL history to score 26 in every game. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were, they were the first, uh, I don't know when they – I know they were the first to do it in the first 15 games, and then obviously they went over 26 today. So the only only team in NFL history that scored at least 26 in every game in a season. And that, that's considering the Patriots that was that juggernaut in 07 and the Vikings back in the late 90s. The Dante it was. Culpepper, Randy yeah. Moss, the Vikings, yeah. That uh, I, I'm saying for, for them to be the only one to do it compared to – those two teams, or or the Rams, you know, when they were the greatest show on turf, yeah, that that's saying something overall for what they did offensively. And and the consistency with with a first year quarterback, because that was the big thing, yeah. coming into the season, right? Where you're and, thinking, and, and and here's and here's what I love so much about the fifty touchdowns, is all I heard in 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 the off season before they got to it was people were like, hey. Pat Mahomes still hasn't thrown a touchdown in the NFL. Still hasn't thrown a touchdown in the NFL. Guess what? He threw 50 this year. I don't know anybody who said that. No, no, I, and I'm, I'm saying like it was a I'm general. I'm just kidding. I'm pretty was, sure if you go check the record, I said that. But I'm saying <laughs> it was a general consensus I used to get on Twitter all the time. And, and now you can be like, well, hey, guess what? He threw 50. Well, that's the thing. You had a quarterback who people weren't sure. I mean, he had 12 interceptions this year, um, including one today on, on an yeah. underthrown deep ball. Um, but. Yeah, that was the question was, was he going to make enough? Was he going to be good enough at making decisions, dissecting defenses, uh, reading plays, um, uh, uh, just to help your team win in, in the camp? That was the thought. Not only did he do that, he blew away any precedent you had. I, 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 I'm abs- I, I mean, I know that you've been all in on the rainmaker uh, from the beginning, but the rainmaker, but look, even the most optimistic person, I mean, 
Patrick Mahomes couldn't have dreamed that this was happening. Even his mother before the season, if you'd been like, be like well, will Patrick Mahomes throw for 5,000 touchdowns this year and 50, uh, 50 touchdowns and 5,000 yards? I'm not even sure his mom would have been. Of course, my son can do anything. Like, not even his mom could have dreamed he would be this freaking good, man. I, I, don't, I don't think his mom sounds like that. I don't think. Uh, I, no, she doesn't. I, I I've I, never actually talked to her, but I, I talked to her. That's that's my generic. On. That's my generic uh, mom, middle aged woman voice. I've, I've talked to her and Pat probably uh, the day whenever they introduced them. Yeah, I know. I think I think yeah, I saw him. Yeah, back in what April two thousand seventeen. Yeah, that'd be about right. Yeah. That was it. Okay. <laughs> so, but no, I mean nobody could have seen. This has to be so far beyond your wildest dreams uh, of what he could accomplish this season. Yeah, I mean, he, he, I think I, I think I had him at 3,600 whenever somebody asked me to do my favorite thing in the world, make predictions. And then, of course, some people mocked it since then. So, you know, hey, that's fine. Um, but yeah, no, I think I had him like 35, 3,600. I expected his interceptions to be somewhere between 16 and 25, dependent, because I didn't know what the O line was or wasn't going to do. And and I will say this, the biggest accomplishment for Mahomes to do that this year, I think the biggest accomplishment and says the most about it is the offensive line protection, to be able to give him that time somewhat to be able to do all that. So I think that's kind of – I think that's really more – more. I, I see it more for them, the enemy, Andy, Kafka, and all those guys. I think it says more and kind of something they can – hold their uh, head up high for being able to do. Speaking of holding their head up high, um, a- after you know losing those two games, to bounce back the way they did and dominate the Raiders 35-3 to close out the season, uh, let's hear from Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and Reggie Raglan. I had to get his name in there so we could tease it. Uh, on uh, the bounce back and, and – um, you know, and what it says about this team. I mean, I'm not going to tell you we didn't want to play here. Uh, that's that's a good thing. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I would say just getting back, uh, playing good football. Uh, we just felt like we had uh, kind of let off the accelerator a little bit there um, and didn't take care of opportunities that we had. And I think the guys just they bared down on it. Um, it wasn't going to happen again in their mind. Uh, it was fun to be around that part of it. And, and feel that energy, and and uh, and so that's how they came out and played, just the way they practiced all week, uh, with that same intensity that that I felt uh, before the game, and during the week during practice. Yeah, I mean, definitely getting the chains moving early, uh, being able to score on that first drive, uh, I guess that momentum in our favor, and uh, the defense. I mean, all night long was just was getting stop after stop, turnover after turnover. And, I mean, that's that's championship football. And so we're excited that uh, they played that way uh, and the offense stepped up when we needed to, and we're going to carry that momentum into the playoffs. First off, let me say uh, criticism we don't care about. It comes to the territory of the game. Even if you're doing good, they're going to talk regardless. So I'm excited to be in this locker room with these guys, man. I go to work with these guys any day of the week. And for us to come out here and play like that, it's just momentum going, going into the playoffs. So criticism, we don't care. It is what it is. It ain't, it ain't about how you start. It's all about how you finish. And so we got to keep going out there and play. That was uh, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and Reggie Raglan. Salty Reggie Raglan there talking about, uh, you know, uh, as if the team's defense hasn't deserved the criticism they received. Hey, if it, if it helps them force four turnovers every single week, I'm good. I'm uh, and that, that was the thing. Be as angry I mean, as you want to be. I think early in the game, I mean, the Raiders were running the ball fairly well, and and the Chiefs the Chiefs came out and they got the big touchdown to Tyreek Hill uh, to go up early. But really, it was the defense. I mean, uh, you know, Daniel Sorensen obviously takes advantage of a, a one of the biggest brain farts I've ever seen on national TV. I mean, uh, from Jared Cook just not not running a route. I mean, that was that was that was on the level uh, of Steve Harvey announcing the wrong winner uh, at a beauty pageant, in my opinion. Um, it was that level of brain fartery, um, you know, and Daniel Sorensen takes to the house. And then, you know, you had wh- whether it was Justin Houston stopping a drive with a, with a strip sack or whether it was Al, Alvin, ba- Alan Bailey, uh, you know, getting that fumble recovery that, that also stopped another drive. Um, that really got, you know, uh, kept, kept the Raiders from, from making it a game. Um, and then allowed the offense to finally get, get it cranked up. And, you know, of course, Patrick with the 89 yard bomb to, Demarcus Robinson not only got the 50 touchdowns, but also went over 5,000 yards. I thought that was fitting too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, offensively, they still got some work ahead of them to get back to the level they were whenever they played Monday Night Football against the Rams. They still got some work to get there. Hopefully, Watkins can kind of help alleviate some of that depending on who they play. But yeah, I mean, uh, defense, 
the defense at times. Did, did did you like what you saw from them, and do you think it's sustainable in the playoffs? At times, they showed the proper aggressiveness against a player of Derek Carr's ability. And by ability, I'm trying to insult him. Um, and, and they they did what what rattles him. And then they also forced the turnovers, and we're looking to create it. Because, see, that's the whole point of what this defense is supposed to be. Pressure the quarterback, disrupt it, and force turnovers. If you're getting if you're getting run on, I get it. But if you force a turnover on the drive and give the ball back to the offense, that's really all that matters at the end of the day because you get points off the board, you get the ball back to to your offense. That's, that's the whole purpose of this defense and, and, and what it's supposed to be for this year. So um, they accomplished it for the most part. There were some times they played off coverage that I wouldn't happy about that <clears throat> let Carr get into a rhythm and they're going to have to fix that. But overall, it, it was a good start. Now, we'll, uh, we'll see if, where they go from there. All right, let's take a quick break. Uh, we'll be back on 4th and 1. Welcome back to 4th and 1. I'm Todd Palmer, joined by Nick Jacobs. And Nick, uh, uh, noticeable in his absence uh, was Eric Berry. Um, I think it's worth pointing out, though, he's played 99 snaps this year. Uh, they lost both games uh, that he played. And not that it was Eric Berry's fault that they lost to the Chargers or lost to the Seahawks, but he also wasn't out there. Uh, at the end of the game, at, at the critical time when they needed to, uh, you know, get stops to to protect that two touchdown lead against the Chargers, or when they needed to get a stop uh, to allow um, Pat Mahomes and the offense a chance to try to win that game uh, in Seattle, um, didn't play this week. Reaggregate, reaggravated uh, calf injury, heel injury, w- whatever it is, uh, didn't play. Wasn't active. Um, he's got a couple weeks to rest up, but. Whether Eric Berry plays or doesn't play, how, how critical do you think that is at this point? Uh, they've they've played so many games without him this year, and they've had the ups and downs. So, I mean, would it be nice to have him out there? I mean, it depends. Because, I mean, there was some times when I was watching Coach's film in Seattle where he didn't really make, he didn't even really set from a tackling perspective. He didn't perform the way you would expect. And then there there were some other times where he just he looked a little out of position, and it, it just – it was different than what you saw in the Chargers game. It wasn't up to par. So, I mean, if they have them, that's fine. If they don't, it's it's not going to make or break the season. Uh, Sammy Watkins missed, uh, I believe, his 18th straight game or no. something like that. But he, look, it ha- hasn't played any significant time um, in, in basically two months at this point. Or we, will have been two months by the time the Chiefs get to the playoffs. Um is his health and his availability critical in looking forward to the playoffs? That's, that's the one that matters because that's what the offense needs to so Tyreek and Kelsey don't get doubled all the time. So they they found some parts with Damian Williams and Daryl Williams to be able to kind of, like you. I know you had said when we were watching the game that you think Daryl Williams should be their goal line power back, and I agree. Yeah, short yardage, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think uh, I think Damian Williams should kind of be more of their speed finesse back. And Charkandrick West, he's, I, this, I'm going to be honest about this, He's not a he's not a running back anymore. It just it's not working for him. But I do think he is a receiver, and yeah. I think they can utilize him as a receiver. And I think he can contribute well to this offense if they utilize him that way. Well, and also he, he's he's a nice insurance policy to have in case uh, Damian Williams gets nicked up in a sure. game and has to come out for a little bit. I mean, he, he's a guy you can at least trust to go in there for a series or two, mm-hmm. uh, or you know, or finish out a game if he had to, um, and if Spencer Ware continued to be unavailable or anything like that. So it's a nice insurance policy to have. Never going to – that rotation is never going to be quite to the level of right. of what Kareem Hunt brought to the table. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you know, it, they're, they're doing okay. Let, let's hear real quick uh, uh, from Andy Reid. Get some injury updates because uh, he also had some some news on uh, uh, Lor- Laurent Duvernay-Tardif. Larry had a good week, um, and the other guys really – uh, and Watkins had a good week, so the other guys have all been out there and, and going through uh, practice, or, or at least parts of it. So I, I think the the week off will will help us uh, um, get healthy and get where we need to be. And we talked. You can go back and, and listen to us talk about the importance of of LDT and uh, what he could contribute. I mean, you know, if nothing else, he provides quality veteran depth for a potential playoff run. It gives you some options uh, with how you want to uh, a, a approach uh, game planning or, or personnel, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in the playoffs. Um, you know, and obviously Watkins, a, a much bigger piece. Uh, defensive tackle Derek Nottie, who, who I think has been an unsung hero for this team, yeah. um, left uh, the Raiders game with concussion. Uh, having two weeks, you, you probably feel yeah, – you, you hope yeah. that he'll be okay uh, in yeah. two weeks and available. 
Um, and then same with uh, safety Jordan Lucas, yes. who had a stinger yeah. um, and, uh, you know, came out of the game. But, but again, you hope those guys will, will be able to contribute in some form or fashion two weeks from now in the AFC divisional round. Um, and obviously, we don't know who they'll play yet. It'll, it'll either be the Colts or the winner of the Chargers at Ravens game. Um, you know, I mean, that much we do know. Um, you know, one what, what of those teams is coming to Kansas City in two weeks, okay? Um, and and, and I it, guess... And it'll be on 41 Action News. Yeah, it will be. That's true. That's true. Uh, mm-hmm. Good good, good call. Um, but I guess... Uh, well, well, first of all, the goal, the goal is the Super Bowl, obviously, right? I mean... It should be, yes. And... and We'll get to this a little bit later in the C block, but um, it, it, do you have a preference of any of those teams, or do you even think at this point it matters who comes to Arrowhead in two weeks? I think selfishly, what I what I would prefer more of is um, I would prefer more so to see the um, the Ravens or Chargers. And the only reason I say that is because the Chiefs know what did and didn't work against those teams, and I think there's some things in Andy's bag of tricks that I think he can move off that and Mahomes knows what he's seen from the defense and what to really expect for the most part. So I think that's probably more of a comfort level in that regard with the Colts, <clears throat> their schemes based off what they ran with the Cowboys last year and the chiefs didn't have a lot of success in that game. So I think they'd have to probably take from that. And then Frank Wright runs somewhat of what Doug and Andy portions of what Doug and Andy did in Philly. So, I mean, there's a comfort level in that regard, but it, Mahomes hasn't seen it, and I would prefer him to see something that he's seen before. Yeah. And with the Ravens, that defense is going to be determined to come back and do what they want, and their Chiefs O line is going to have a tall task against them with that. But I just don't think Lamar Jackson is the guy that can hurt that defense in terms of the passing game if it comes down to that. Yeah. Well, I, the the flip side, of course, is that those two defenses, uh, and in the case of the, the Chargers twice now, have gotten to see Mahomes too. So they have some tape on him. They know what confuses him, what works against him. And, and, you know, so so there's a, there's a give and take there. But let's hear from uh, – uh, we've got Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey after the big win against the Raiders talking about the goals and what lays ahead for this team now that, that the playoffs are here. That's the name of the game. Regardless, at the end, you got to finish. And uh, today we went out there and played ball, and we, we just do what we do. Uh, we a tough team to beat. So we just got to go out there and just play ball, keep giving offense multiple opportunities to score that rock because that's what they do. And uh, we do that, we have a good shot at winning. We all trying to reach a goal, and that's the Super Bowl. So head down. I mean, we all focused, man, man. And like I said, I mean, it feels great, you know what I'm saying? But right now I just want to I just want to win a Super Bowl. Well, we just want to win a Super Bowl. All in all, what we've, what we've handled in the past in terms of uh, ending the season short, I think we've learned from it. And we got a lot of guys that are uh, still building to make that uh, – Make that a change this year. And uh, sorry, you may have noticed that that was not. Uh, I wrote it wrong. The the Muppet esque voice of one Patrick Mahomes. That was actually Reggie Ragland, uh, Tyree Kill, and Travis Kelsey talking about what lays ahead for this team. <clears throat> and obviously, what lays ahead is, is a home playoff game, potentially two. <clears throat> the Chiefs have lost their last six games here at Arrowhead, though. I mean, it's been Patrick Mahomes wasn't alive the last time that the Chiefs won a a home playoff game, uh, won a game in the playoffs at Arrowhead Stadium. Um, does that does that worry you at all? I'm glad he hasn't seen it. You know, I hope he hasn't seen any of the games. Well, I'm sure he, well, he was there last year, man. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> so the Titans won, yeah. I'm just hoping he doesn't have any of the any of the nightmares in his head like the rest of us do. Well, and I think, yeah, I, I doubt if he, uh, you know, went back and uh, I doubt if he had, you know, had trouble going to sleep the night of the, uh, you know, January 98 after the, <laughs> the divisional, you know, when, when, uh, yeah, I don't think Elvis Gerbach's pass to Lake Dawson fluttered incomplete in the end zone. Um, um, but look, I, I still, I, this is, this is where I come down on it. Okay. I would always rather be at home. I, I don't care if it's been, I don't care if it's been 40 years since they won a home playoff game. I, I would still rather be at home where I think this defense plays better. I would still rather be at home in front of my fans where, where the guys have a comfort level. Um, and I, and, and when it comes to the playoffs, I would always rather have the better quarterback in the situation. So I think the chiefs are in prime position and, and look, the last five teams that have had the home field advantage in the AFC have wound up in the Super Bowl. So you got to feel good about that. Um, and I'm sure uh, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Houston, and Travis Kelsey feel pretty darn good about having home field advantage too. 
always, always an advantage to be in this in this uh, stadium, and so for us to be able to kind of get the bye week, get your bodies right and ready for this run, and then be able to play in this stadium where we can feed off that energy, uh, it, it's it's special, and we're excited for the opportunity to do it. Like I told everybody in the locker room, it don't mean nothing if we don't take advantage of this opportunity. So. We got one game coming up. That's our focus. We need to do what we got to do and just attack this game one game at a time. So we only got one game. I mean, the individual accolades in this game alone are, uh, I don't know, I think are a bit overrated. It's uh, it's, it's an ultimate team game. You got 11 guys out there trying to trying to push for one goal. And um, sure enough, uh, we achieved that today as a team. So, I mean, I'm ecstatic to finally get a, you know, home field advantage for the playoffs. Bring Five, everyone to Arrowhead. Four, um, two, uh, first round bye. Two. And, you know, it's um, that's what these fans deserve. All right. We're going to test you here, Nick, real quick. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Justin Houston, Travis Kelsey, obviously excited to, to stay at home. I, I love Justin Houston's perspective, by the way, about how uh, it doesn't really matter if they don't take advantage of it. And I'm sure uh, he's thinking about that 2016 game against Pittsburgh a couple of years ago when they, they weren't the one seed, but they were the two seed uh, and, and spit the bit uh, with a chance to win that game. So I'm sure he comes to that from a place of history. But um, name, uh, and we'll see if you follow me on Twitter here. Because I put this out on Twitter before we did the podcast. That's pretty, pretty busy working. You go for it. Name the last team and its starting quarterback, other than Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, to lead uh, his team to the number one seed in the AFC. Number one seed. Okay. Um, I know it wasn't Flacco that year because nope. they, they were six. Mm-hmm. They were wild card. <laughs> And it's not Roethlisberger, I can tell you that. No, no, I wouldn't get a, I wouldn't do that. I'll one. just give you that one. Yeah, no, because the last time, <laughs> last uh, time I, I think they were the number one seed was his rookie year in '06 when they went like 15 and one and they lost to the Patriots. Well, I, I'll give you one. I'll give you one more. It was not Blake Bortles. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I pre- I appreciate you helping me on that one. I'm just. Man, I'm trying to think of number one seeds back then. That one's tough. You, you actually got I, me on the Rolodex one on this one. There you go. It was 2008. Does that help? No. 2008, Tennessee Titans actually went 13-3. and three. Oh, with McNair back then? No. That was it, McNair? No. It was Gary Collins. Oh, how <laughs> yeah. Vince Young was a backup on the team. Um, you know, Chris Johnson ran for like 1300 yards that year, but I think the defense is what led him there. Um, but yeah, I mean, they actually beat out the Colts with, with, with Manning back in 2008, um, uh, by one game, they, they went 13 and three, the Colts finished 12 and four, Kerry Collins, the last quarterback before Patrick Mahomes. I never would have gotten that. No, I know. That's why, that's why I tested you on it. Um, <laughs> do you feel better about your life now, Tom? No, not at all. Not at all. But why I do. Are you smiling? But I do feel like I pulled the one over on old Nick. Um, yeah, no, you did, man. I'm sorry I didn't know Kerry Collins. Well, but that's, uh, I, I just I just thought that was crazy to, you know, uh, Cody Tapp was in for Sunday uh, sound off, and we were kind of looking at, like, hey, when was the last year somebody other than Roethlisberger, Manning, or Brady got his team the number one seed in the AFC? Uh, and who who knew it was Kerry Collins? I, I thought I <laughs> thought you were going to come at me with uh, <clears throat> with that when the Colts beat the Broncos when they were one and done that year when Luck went into Denver and they beat the Broncos. I thought you and that's what got John Fox fired. I thought that I thought that was what your question was going to end up being. But no. But speaking of which, uh, we'll ball. get to this. We'll get to this in the C block because. Uh, um, I do have some thoughts on uh, who I'd like to see coming to Arrowhead. So we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more uh, coming back. Welcome back to fourth and one. Hey, we're going to uh, hit a couple uh, topics that we know people are going to be talking about this week. First of all, man, um, MVP, uh, you know, Mahomes is 14 of 24, uh, 281 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Uh, Drew Brees didn't play on Sunday, uh, but it, it was clear that um, Andy's, idea was not to go out there and try to um, showcase Patrick Mahomes for the MVP. Um, do you think he did enough though um, to, 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 or, I mean, I know you'd vote for him, but do you think he did enough to earn, um, earn, earn that award? He should have, but I'm always going to have my doubts, especially with some of the, some of the people that I know are actually on the voting list and I've seen some of their responses mm-hmm. and they, they just keep hammering home. Breeze's completion percentage, 
just hammering that one home. And then, and then and then they keep bringing up some of these, and some of these people are actually going to be voters. They're going to vote on it. And they keep bringing up the Patrick Mahomes in prime time that he's, you know, he's he's a zero and four in the, in in these uh, games against the you know the Chargers and and the and the Rams and the Patriots and Mahomes can't get it done against elite teams and. And, and and they just keep bringing. They just keep trying to find ways to discredit a guy who threw for five thousand yards and fifty touchdowns. It's amazing to me. I had, and one guy commented to me on Twitter, and he he said that Patrick Mahomes scores too quickly and doesn't help his defense. So, yeah. I mean, you know, people are coming up with everything that they can to discredit a guy who who is only the second person in NFL history to help his team in here, that here, way. Here's what I'd say. Um, I. I have a lot of respect for Drew Brees. Drew Brees has done amazing things in this league. It's unfortunate that he came up in an era when Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, people yeah. forget, were in their prime and yeah. and, and were winning MVPs. Um, and, and, and you know, and and I don't think that does anything to take away from Drew Brees, all-time leading passer in NFL history. Um, he's going to at some time. Uh, uh, next year, become the all-time leader in passing touchdowns. Um, I, you know, I, I, he's going to get that record from Peyton Manning. Uh, he's going to go down as one of the all-time greats. He's got a Super Bowl uh, title under his belt. May well get another one this year. Um, but he, Patrick Mahomes, threw for more touchdowns against AFC teams than uh, than than Drew Brees did this season. Patrick Mahomes threw for he I think he threw for as many or more touchdowns on the road as as Drew Brees did this season. But they're still finding ways to try. To I, I just I just it's I, amazing I, to me. I I I think that as great as uh, as as Drew Brees has been in his career, this is the MVP is not a career award, and it's it's unfortunate that they don't have an an AFC and an NFC award like they do an AL and an NL MVP in baseball. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, and, and so, anyway, Andy didn't uh, exactly go out and put together a game plan trying to showcase Patrick for that award, but he did stump for him pretty hard afterwards. Yeah, he's been the MVP. He's done good. He, um, he's a heck of a player. I, I was fortunate enough to be around a three-time MVP, and, um, and a couple guys were right on the edge of being the MVP. And um, this guy's this guy's in that uh, right in that category, man. Of, I mean, he's so deserving. Um, in, a, in a world here of great players, for him to do the things he's done is phenomenal. And he'll continue to do that. He hasn't, he, he's still got room to grow. So that's the exciting part, something for uh, Kansas City to be very excited about. And, um, and his work ethic and everything else is MVP caliber level. So he comes to work, he comes to work with a purpose, makes everybody feel a part of it, makes everybody around him better, um, and has done this for this organization. So. Uh, for all of us, uh, as fans and uh, coaches, and and our owner too. So, um, so uh, it's uh, he's been very important. I mean, there's a lot of guys that have played uh, this year that I feel like deserve the MVP, and, and it's not it's not up to me. I mean, I just go out there and play my game, try to win football games, and uh, let all that stuff handle itself a- after the season. After the season, and uh, hopefully, I'm still playing whenever it happens. So that was uh, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, and um, look. I, I obviously I'm pretty biased, but but I think it, it, the the award in my mind will be cheapened a little bit if they make it like a a gold star for your career and give it to uh, Drew Brees because to me the the whole defensive argument is actually a much bigger check mark in uh, in Patrick Mahomes' column because I as good as Drew Brees has been if you put him on this team with the weapons they have the offensive line they have. Um, you know, and you give him the same stats. Th- this isn't, uh, they aren't the number one team in the AFC. They aren't 12 and four. Um, you know, th- that's not to say they're not a good team, but they're not, I mean, they aren't, they aren't beating out the chargers for the AFC West title. Uh, if Patrick Mahomes doesn't throw for all of those 5,000 yards and all of those 50 touchdowns. A- and t- to me, um, it-, it cheapens the award. If you don't, re- if you don't reward that. Yeah, correct. I mean, Mahomes has done almost everything imaginable that you could, ask a player to do to showcase that he's one of the best in the league right now and I mean he should get the award but I'm telling you man I keep seeing and keep seeing those people keep putting that up there and I'm like you're a voter I, I understand I mean look in my mind the only person you can justify voting ahead of of him for MVP is Dustin Colquitt <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, there you go. There's my obligatory Colquitt mention for this podcast. Hey, uh, real quick, let's. Uh, so next week, uh, the Chiefs are off. Um, so they'll, they'll, you know they probably they probably won't even, they'll just get away from football, right? Um, but for the rest of us, we've still got another week uh, of football to get through. So um, next week uh, on Saturday, you're going to have. Uh, the Colts at Houston, those two teams split the season series. Uh, you're going to have Seattle at Dallas on Saturday. Um, and then uh, Sunday, the Chargers are at Baltimore. And the Eagles, uh, reigning Super Bowl champions who snuck in on the last day, uh, will be at Chicago. Chicago kind of got to pick its opponent. Uh, they could have laid down and let the Vikings win and gotten a rematch with the Vikings. Um, but instead, they said, no, uh, we'll take our chances with Nick Foles. Um so we'll, we'll see how that works out for, uh, for Kevin Holmes's bears. Um, and then of course, um, you know, depending on who wins those games, the chiefs will get the lowest remaining seed, uh, or the worst remaining seed among those. Um, so the only team they can't face is Houston because if Houston beats the Colts or the Patriots, well, yeah, well, the Patriots are the number two seed. They're also have a buy. So obviously I'm um, saying not going to face the people. Out there. Uh, oh, I mean, technically they can't face any the NFC teams next week either. That's a solid point uh, as well. So, and they will not have to play Alabama or Clemson, um, um, in, in the divisional round, no matter who <laughs> wins, uh, who wins the, uh, FBS championship. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that, that takes you through there. So Nick, I guess last question, we'll leave, we'll leave with this. Uh, and we'll get more into this later in the week, I'm sure on another podcast preview and kind of the wild card weekend, but, yeah. um, the Colts Ravens chargers of the three teams that can come to Kansas city, which one scares you the most and why, or do any of them scare you? Um, I think the unknown with the Colts is what I would be most concerned about having not played them before. So, um, I mean, it, all three teams are capable of beating the Chiefs. I think a lot of people are going to say the Ravens because they're they're what six and one now, and with Lamar Jackson at quarterback, and and you know, their defense is playing lights out. And. Yeah, it, well, I mean, any team that has a run game is going to concern you against the Chiefs, and then if the Chiefs' offense stumbles a couple times, then that may that may be a problem. So, yeah, all the teams are, that are potentially going to come in are all capable of beating the Chiefs, but the Chiefs are capable of beating all three of them if their offense is on point and their defense can force some turnovers and get some pressures. That's really and here, what it comes down to. Well, and here's what I'll say. I, you know, the Chiefs have lost six straight home games. And, and look, I, I would say probably maybe last year Alex Smith was a better quarterback than Marcus Mariota. Yeah, he was. Um, but most years the Chiefs have had the worst quarterback mm-hmm. when, when teams have come in. Well, you know, no offense to Trent Green. I love what Trent Green did um, in his career uh, under Dick Vermeil. But when Peyton Manning brought the Colts in yeah, here Manning's in 2013, going, uh, Manning's a better quarterback than Trent Green. Manning's going to Hall of Fame. Trent. Yeah. Trent, Trent, Trent might be in the Chiefs. He Hall might, of yeah, he might make the Chiefs Ring of Honor. That'd be nice for him. Um, but most years, uh, aside from last year, which I think was a little bit of an anomaly um, in terms of the Chiefs' sad sack history at home, the, the Chiefs have had the worst quarterback. Uh, given that, the, uh, look, I, lo- I like Andrew Luck a lot. He's been playing well. Uh, Phillip Rivers, I think, has a, has a potential uh, to be a Hall of Fame guy down the road. I still... Uh, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback left in the AFC. Um, and, and so I'll take my chance with Patrick Mahomes against any of them. The one team that scares me, uh, is the Colts. And only because I feel like the chiefs, um, are snake bit against the Colts in the playoffs. I mean, you, you go back to the 2013 playoffs when they blew a, a 28, a four touchdown lead in Indianapolis. Yeah. I was you on know, the sidelines for that game. Yeah. And we talked about the no punt game. I was in the press box, uh, watching the Greg Robinson's 32 defense, uh, give that one away. And who can forget, uh, the kicker who shall not be named game, um, in 95, which is one of the other times the chiefs were the number one overall seat. And I could bring up the other one. You don't like me to bring up from Oh six. Yeah, well, I just feel like the Chiefs weren't were, were not a good team that year. I, I didn't think they belonged in the playoffs. I did think that with Larry Johnson and the and that run game, if they had a chance to go into Indianapolis and win the football game, because Indianapolis didn't have a very good run defense that year, I, I don't feel like we had a very good game plan for that one. But no, I mean, bottom the the point is uh, the Chiefs are terrible against the Colts in the playoffs. Yeah, they've they've had some struggles, so we'll. Uh... We'll see how everything shakes out uh, this time next week. Yeah. And, of course, they've got Chris Ballard, uh, you know, uh, as, as the GM. They've got uh, two Kansas City kids uh, starting on the offensive line, Evan Bame at center, and uh, and Braden Smith, a the South kid well, and at right a, tackle. And here's your fun fact about Chris Ballard. He was a part of both organizations that went one of five and still made the playoffs because he was there with the Chiefs when they did it in 2015. Yeah. Well, there's also – he probably – I don't think he was part of the 1970 Bengals who went one and six and then made the playoffs. 
I don't, I don't believe so now. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll have to check the record on that. I'll tell you what, guys, uh, listen uh, to the fourth one podcast later this week, and we will confirm whether Chris Ballard was, in fact, <laughs> part of that Bengals uh, franchise that's, back that's in, your in 1970. Yeah. Uh, until then, uh, we hope you uh, have sweet dreams uh, of AFC titles and uh, Super Bowl parades here in Kansas City. And have some butterscotch. Darn right. <laughs>